Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound. And as you could see a few days ago, I had a short uh, teaser and walk around video of this TT build. Now this is gonna be a longer one because it's going home. And this is now super last minute as well, just to take footage of it, which is important because we have so many videos of this project. If you haven't seen any of this yet, guys, and if you're interested how this, this system has been built in the last four years, stage in, in small stages, then please go to description and and click on to the playlist then you will see like i don't even know like 17 18 videos many videos um so let's run through what we have speakers up front haven't changed since the latest stage but i'll just go through them so on the dash we have custom a pillars for the arco tweeters um if you haven't heard about Arco, uh, that brand was kind of the start of the Ecuton automotive line because the guys at SES in Germany started to use Ecuton um, home audio drivers modified for the car audio field. And a few years later, we have the Ecuton automotive line. And that's what we have in the dash as a mid-range over there. custom install the whole dash came out um, the side vents were deleted um, the speedo which is pretty thick on the TTs that was rebuilt as well the whole dash was retrimmed um, yeah that was a decent job and then mid base we have same Arco um, six and a half inch base drivers in custom sealed enclosures each side they are pretty small, but uh, because we knew we needed the front sub anyway, many, many years ago, in one of the videos, it's explained why we needed it really, because the rear sub basically, well, it's stupid to tell you, you know, to go to a video and find it. I just quickly describe it. Basically the rear sub, when we knew we needed a rear sub for the really low lows, and we fitted an FI IB3, uh, 15 inch sub in true infinite buffle. It breathes out to the external airspace underneath the rear bumper. Although before that we had an acoustic elegance 15 inch sub there, which was way better sounding. But Chris just wanted something really mean, mean looking stuff. So we ended up with the FI and it's it's good for the system. It's only playing on 35 Hertz really. Um, because uh, this car has a very specific acoustics, it's really small, really rigid uh, cabin. And from that location at the driving position, you don't really hear much above 45 from the rear sub. So it was pretty impossible to integrate from mid base to the rear sub. There would have been a gap. Um, that's why we had the front sub at one stage, which is another custom sealed enclosure in the glove box. Now we have a hybrid audio Clarus 10 in it. We had a Pioneer ODR in it before, which sounded beautiful, it was very accurate, but it was one of those old 10 inch subs that couldn't really handle much power if we wanted to go really loud and dynamic. So the Clarus is doing a way better job now. Um, so that's how we have the freeway front end and front sub and rear sub. Amplification, as you could see in the previous short video, we changed, we changed big things because uh, before we had many DLS amps, but we needed extra channels because I forgot to mention that we have another pair of speakers in the system, which is, and I have to change this music because I think this is the official Emma disc and I may talk about that at the end. And this is the HD player playing now on the DSP. Sorry for this music guys in the background, but at least I don't have problem with copyrights with this. Um, so I forgot to mention that we have rear speakers. We have hybrid audio air to SE wide bands at the back playing as differential rear feel. So it's not your conventional rear feel. It's only playing like an effect driver. It's not playing any mono content. If you have a DSP like most of the Helix, and this Zapco HDSP5 as well that we run in the system, it can do rear feel in a differential manner. Um, basically, 
you send left and right signal to that driver and you deduct the right signal from that by reversing the polarity on it and then you send left and right signal to the right driver as well but you reverse the polarity on the left signal in the DSP. If it's a bit confusing for you then open one of these softwares and then you can see how you can do it. So this way mono signal is not being played at all. It's not screwing up your front stage. The, the level on them is slightly dropped and attenuated and then there's a substantial delay um, applied on them. People think that you have to time the rear feel so it arrives to your head at the same time uh, with the front speakers. Nope. You have to chuck an extra at least 20 millisecond on it so your DSP has to be able to do that too because quite many DSPs can't do that much amount of delay. I think the HDSP5 can do 100 milliseconds, which is ridiculous. Why, did, why, why do you even need that for? That's 34 meters. You can create like, a, I don't know, like a super big concert hall with, with that amount of delay. To be fair, it, it doesn't work. It, it's just, it's crazy, whatever. Um, but this way, it can give you a bit more ambience and room information. And I don't know. All the cars I've built in the last one, one and a half year with rear feel properly, people can't live without them. So, yeah, we wanted it. Chris wanted something special, something a bit more. Hence, we needed more amplification, more amplifier channels. So we had to let the DLS go. Um, they were old as well. Not that they were not reliable. We had a tiny bit of issues with them here and there, uh, but then it was an easy fix by, by Gordon. Uh, by M Doctor in UK. So, but we we opted for something long term, and hence we have the Zepco Z 150.6 AP for tweet, mid, and rear feel. The second uh, 400.2 AP for kick bass, and then the other 400.2 for front and rear sub. Both subs are two ohm, so that amp can produce more than 600 watts for each. Plenty. The kick bass is the most ridiculous now on the 400.2. There's just so much clean headroom on, on tap that it's it's actually frightening when the system goes full tilt. Um, so that's the layout. The DSP and everything is underneath. The power distribution as well, the rack can tip. Please check the previous short video I shared on the channel. You can also find it in the playlist. Then you see how we made it pretty practical. Um, it's not finished yet. That's going to be another stage when, when we do the fancy panels. Um, I just had two quick uh, side panels. It's not even trimmed, not even finished. And I'm not even sure that we keep them because um, I started a layout and Chris didn't like it. So we will come back to it when we are not rushed, when we have time. Now we will definitely have a couple of months till he can come back and we can, we can do everything to finish it because, yeah, it can't be left like this. Although, you know, it's pretty impressive. Big amps on fancy angles. He didn't want a, a flat layout. It could have been done that way, way easier. It would have given me less headache than having the amps like that, which was rather difficult because uh, I decided to use steel plates. If you can see them, um, and they are mounted with uh, threaded bolts into inserts to get the right angle and then the amps I bought it onto the steel so this way I could space them away cables can come out from underneath and on the other side we have the power so that's pretty much it about the system and then I show you this Emma disc because I don't think I've ever shown it and people always ask you know Pete what do you use for reference well this is one of them. This is proper competition music, so I'll just quickly run through it for you. Before the disc, the sources. I have to mention what sources we have. We still kept the Pioneer P90. It's it's pretty old head unit, but used to be proper reference level that we kept because it's been there, it looks right. It, 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 gotta, it gotta be there. Oh, hang on a second, my, my logo. That used to be our system power up. Um, now it's disabled, but it, but the light is kept just as a feature. Yeah, that was a fancy job for B when he used to be around. 
Um, so P80 is still there with the deck at the back. So we only use just a pair of RC output from it into the uh, DSP. Yes, we could have modified digital output and then run it straight into, um, into the DSP or use the analog outs at the back. But it was all like that. Keyboards are in. And to be fair, I don't care. It works. And <laughs> the amount of time Chris is going to use it, it doesn't really matter much. Um, on the HDSP5, we have sep separate um, source inputs. We have... Um, and I changed that because copyright is going to bomb me. I think I only have a few seconds. So we have Zcom is, is the HD Bluetooth module in the DSP. If I press it one more time, then it jumps onto coax. That we have a cable for over, uh, over here. So we can plug his DAP into that wired. But to be fair, the HD Bluetooth module is so good that I don't think he's going to use it that much. But we have it there. It's been there. And radio CDs for the CD player, and then HD player is in that corner. Um, pretty easy layout. We also have a little Brax display down there with a momentary push. So if I press and hold it, you can see the, the actual calibrated exact voltage 12.9 because I have the all the car lights running and everything. Otherwise, the, the battery is run on 13.2 when it's fully charged in the car. We have a 70 amp power AGM up front linked to a 40 amp power lithium at the back. Um, the lithium pulls it up to 13.2. The display shows 0.3 less. I don't know, on all the Zepco controllers, it's always 0.3 less, but it's it's been the same on all of them, so I'm fine with that. Um, so that's uh, that's the source part of the system. Okay, let's through, let's run through the disc. Right, let's go to track one. Oops, no, that's that's not that one. It's the first track, the introduction, just get a bit of it. Welcome to the Emma Competition Disc Edition 2018. This disc will help you to adjust and judge your car audio system. We at Emma strongly believe that this is only possible while listening to the natural sound of real instruments and voices recorded as linear as possible. And that's also why this CD is mixed, only with a few tweaks, some reverb and a slight EQ work to preserve the live feel as if you would sit in the audience. It's noted in the booklet where we have done more manipulation to the sound. A good example for this is track 7 where you can hear the complete opposite with heavy mixing applied to a small wooden cigar box. So as you can hear, the whole album was mixed in a way that there's not much processing on it. Everything is pretty raw. Technical tracks are pretty technical, not fun, but helps you to set up your system. This shows because track one left. Hang on. And before we do that, so now we definitely fade the rear fields out because for these technical tracks it doesn't help for right. sure left right so these positional tracks are for identifying your left and right and how wide the stage is so left tells you on every single note and all the notes should appear at the same width um, it's going to tell you how far your stage is the furthest point the same way on right and then center should fall right in the middle of, of far left and far right which is not in front of you you could only have center in front of you if left was here left right center or if that's where left is your right should be somewhere on the on this on the side gloss like right next to you then you could have center in the middle when people say that you should have center in, in front of you yes i get it that's the best position when you have a, a perfect setup at home at equal distances equal ang equal angles then center should appear in front of you then it's more kind of more believable that you are facing the band you're facing the the main singer but in a car 
if you want a correct, and I emphasize it, if you want a correct stage, then your center is going to be right in the middle of far left and far right. Obviously, in left hand driven cars, I would sit there, but same way, your center would be roughly there if the drivers are located something similar to this, or if you had your mid and tweed on the pillar, same way, center should still be roughly somewhere in the middle of the dash. Um, it always depends on, you know, how far your, your passenger side is, because normally um, the stage gets a bit limited on driver's side to where the speaker locations are. It's really difficult to get it, you know, staging further out but on passenger side it's, it's easier to to make it like it's a bit wider than where the speakers are located due to due to the um, um, reflective surfaces around that and and the way the sound gets to you in driving position but center should be there so this track identifies far left far right center and after that when you have center it does far uh, sorry it does a left center and right center the same way there's no point to listen to it. Center. But then that's your center. And all these instruments should come from the same left same center. point. Left center. It's not gonna come through a phone recording like that, that's for sure. And then right center should come right. Right in front of me. center. Okay. Next track is for focus. So this focus track is for making sure that every single instrument you could hear is playing played back at the correct size. So focus in this case means the size of the instrument, if it's correct or not. Um, all of these instruments are uh, center stage, so they should all come from center not all over the place, they should come from there with the right size. If someone has a lot of bass in his car, then the first kick drum is going to be really boomy in their cars. Let's just go back quick. Back. It's a really dry, on point kick bass. It's not boomy, whereas the double bass is more elongated. Seems like it has more body. Acoustical guitar and so on. Um, and every single note should come from the center. Then Oop, back. Well, this track is for the stage with height and depth. Um, not depth, distance to stage, sorry. Those are two different things. People always mix up distance to stage and depth. They are two very different things. Distance to stage means how far the stage is from the listening position, how far the start line is. So if this car has the closest point to the listener at like where, the, where those dash went start, then in the rule book, they have a drawing where it shows how many points you can get. The furthest away, the more points you get. Um, you know, in some cars, if the mid-range is like on, on the side of the door, then it's pretty difficult to, to get distance to stage far out if you'll be pretty close in your face. But when you have drivers there, then it's pretty easy to get the stage, you know, further away from you, which is more, believ more believable to me um, it's not like you're sitting in a cinema in the first row and then, you know, looking up at the screen is like, oh, you know, it's not natural. 
Same way when you go to a gig, you don't want to stand in the first row unless you want to see the, the, the knickers of the singer or, you know, whatever. Well, if the singer is a nice lady, you know. Um, um, but this is for the stage boundaries, same way for the width and and the height. Ideally, it should be eye level. You know, if it's low, you get less points. If it's too high, the same way you get less points. Um, go on emanet.com, go on um, the sound quality judge book, then everything is, is drawn and written down and, and described even better than now how I run through it. So once you get this disc, it's pretty, pretty useful for you. Um, then we have tonality tracks. Again, you go online, everything is described, where the instrument should be positioned, you even have a picture for the band, how it was recorded, um, and it should be pretty realistic. Um, the kick bass in, in this track is, is really tight, on point, um, it's, it's really not boomy, so it's easy to pick a system that doesn't have an accurate sub and kick bass, uh, but all these trumpet saxophones and everything you know they should be realistic they should have a nice bite in the mid-range like any brass instrument and then the next one Same way, full bands, there's a, a bit more body in, in the drum um, and the singer, Gigi, that's what the song is also called. Um, her voice is pretty raw, there's not much compression on it, so when, when she goes loud, it comes through really well. Judges are trained every year at Eurofinals. Um, well, when we have normal life without COVID madness, um, they are trained by the book, by you know, um, and and yeah, people say you know, sound quality judging is, is subjective. Two people can't judge the same, but that's why they have two judges at Eurofinals, so they check how close the judging. Um, scoring line is from one to another judge if there's big difference then they have a head judge who's going to double check it but it's pretty rare if i see a head judge to be called over to to check the other two judges that's probably like once or twice it's really rare so um it it can be used it, it can be used um in a in an objective way and once you get familiar with these songs you can use them forever it's especially this latest um i think this was the 17 and 18 disc which we used in 19. you can also order it on emonet.co.com so and the next track is something that many people need one of my favorite tracks peak low frequency at 100 hertz <laughs> Forty, thirty. 
<laughs> Actually, I've been playing everything to you with bass pulled down all the way because I didn't want the garage to boom. Because you also have these funny things on, on the controller. You have bass, middle, treble. <laughs> Um, which at first I thought it was it was a gimmick and it was bullshit, but actually quite often I, I need it because some recordings um, have different bass level than then you can you know just adjust it at such, or you can also play with with the treble that I, I use the most. If something is recorded very very well, you can just bump it up a few clicks. It's a shell filter, and it gives more detail if you like the top end or if you don't like the top end, you can just drop it back at such so it's useful um, so go back to previous track because I have to explain what's happening with that funny song this is what we had at the introduction he was explaining that it's a, a modulated um, cigar box that they were hitting and it peaks at 100 80 60 40 and then 30 Hertz so, this is a technical part of scoring sub bass. Um, one half of our 30 points, so 15 points, come from tonality, from the tonality tracks. Then the other 15 points come from this technical track. There are five notes. Every single note has to be heard and played at the same level compared to each other. Um, so then you can get one point for each. If something sounds too much or you hardly hear it, then you don't get a point. Then the other five points come for coming from center from the front. If it comes from the front, from the center, you get another point. Some In some cars, it's it's pretty easy to hear, you know, even already 60 hertz from the back, um, especially 40 and 30. To hear everything from up front, it's not that easy. Then you can get other five points if you don't hear anything else but the sound. If there's no noise, no rattle, no vibration, no squeaky noises when these notes are played. Again, if people have rattly doors, then they can buzz because it's only that thing playing, nothing else. You know, it's really easy to hear it. Maybe even if you have a little rattle in your door, you wouldn't hear it with normal music. Right, you get the idea. This car won't rattle, you know. Kicks is, is rock solid. Everything in this car is, is ultra rock solid. So you only hear the sound, nothing else. So that's how you can get three times five points, 15 points maximum for the technical part, and then another 15 for tonality. That's how the sub bass is judged. And it's a very useful track because then you can easily hear if, if the bass is not coming from the, the front, it's not like now. I'm not even sure you can actually hear it through the phone because this phone records anything under 50 hertz pretty shit. Um, but that's that's the bass side. Then you have this track for spectral balance. Are you gonna take it serious this time? I don't know. Are you leaving town this fall? Probably won't go. Are you really hurt so bad? I won't show. My world's not small. Yeah, I want to discover it all. So with this track, they check how each band um, is in level with, with each other, like, you know, if you have too much top ends, you know, in this one, it would easily come out on the castanet or on, on his voice, it would be really, you know, CC, um, CC, that's not even a word. <laughs> um, same way, if you don't have enough mid range, then his voice is not realistic. The acoustic guitar wouldn't sound realistic. If you have too much lower mid range, then the acoustic guitar has um, a lot of body, whereas this is really, well mastered and, and recorded it's really clean um so again it's all in the judge book it described how it should sound and if you ever want to participate then you know judges will will tell you how to improve your system what to work on 
and there are a few more tracks actually no audible information. zero bit track it's the zero bit track. so this concludes they, they turn the it up process. and then if they hear any noise in your system then you know you can get deductions uh, and then that was track five but this is the long version for listening pleasure and and, and judging many other elements of your system not something that you're gonna demo to one of your friends but for judging by ear this disc is, is is brilliant it was high time to you know share this content with you and if you can go on Emonet buy it honestly um, plus once we have competition season again in UK or anywhere you are where there's Emma format then then join them and it's good fun you can you can you know you can meet other audio files you can check their systems you can hear what they they do so here we go this is pretty much it for this video guys hopefully i'm not gonna get many complaints that this was too long again it is what it is if you don't like it you've already you know you left this video probably after two minutes um so what else did I want to tell you guys? No, I don't, I don't start that topic because there's going to be a separate video coming very soon when I want to announce something very important with, uh, you know, important to you. So yeah, I just got it here. Let me know what you think about it. How you, you like the, the direction of this system. I know I will have many complaints that Pete is using Zapco amps again. That's going to be a separate video. I'm going to explain why I do that and why I do why I use certain brands. So I'm going to have a video where I just explain what brands I use and why. I leave it now. But if if you know if you have complaints, go for it. Tell me what your problem is or why you like what I do. And then I bring the next one as soon as I can. Take care.